Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and thank you to the witnesses who are here today for being with us. The phasing out of 14C is not only a labor equity issue, it's a civil rights issue. Every worker, including workers with disabilities or differing abilities, deserve a living wage. This issue is somewhat personal for me. I worked at South Bear Training School, a residential facility here in, Connecticut, in my state of Connecticut for people with physical and intellectual disabilities. I was there for 15 years and I have been a job coach and supported so many of our residents as they uh, worked at these sheltered workplaces. Through those years, I experienced firsthand that while many of those individuals required specialized services, I also saw the potential for them to succeed with proper supports and saw many of them thrive outside of those workplaces. Another concern that I saw is that one of the workshops that I was in was a place where we had, where um, the employer asked, the job was to piece together um, packets for a much larger corporation. Those packets were sold at full price while the people who put them together were paid a sub-minimum wage. I've heard concerns that the passage of the Transfer Transformation to Competitive Employment Act would mean an end to sheltered uh, workshops nationwide. I just do not believe that to be true. So Mr. Lewis, can you describe the resources provided by the bill for employers to transition from utilizing 14C certificates to providing high wage employment for all workers, including workers with different abilities? Thank you for this question, because again, I think that's the point that needs to be hammered home. The phase out of 14C is not going to eliminate the ability for these existing community rehabilitation programs to operate. Uh, those entities that say that they can't, that's a business decision that they're making because their peers in this environment are doing it and doing it successfully. The Transformation Act itself has provisions that again, I wish were in place back when I was doing this. There are grants to the states that want to implement the services um, to allow the workshops to transition into a new business model, a proven, new proven business model. Uh, and we know that in instances where the states are not um, willing to uh, apply for the grants. There's still gonna be some ambitious community rehabilitation programs that recognize that this is the right thing to do. And the bill itself offers grants for those particular entities to do it as well, which is a great thing because they will become exemplars, right? For their peers. And then it also offers technical assistance. Um, again, building on the best practice of what's been done uh, makes it possible for others to do it without the overhead that it costs. I, I would bring another example. When we first started advocating for the phase out, well, we've been doing it as an organization for centuries, well, not centuries, decades. But when we, in this recent initiative started, uh, we were engaging with the individuals at Goodwill Industries, which had a significant amount of their community rehabilitation programs dependent on 14C. And I remember a conversation with Jen Gibbons, who was the executive director at the time, and we pointed out that approximately two thirds of them were working without the 14C certificate. And we were asking, and I never got to an answer this question. So the one third of remaining community rehabilitation programs that say that the 14C certificate is needed. So what is that? Are they dealing with a more significantly disabled population than the others, which is not true, or, or the people in their geographic area somewhat more disabled than others, which also wasn't true. The fact remains that it's been proven by a majority of entities that it can be done. And the decision not to do so is a business decision, not a result of the incapacity of the people with disabilities. Thank you. I appreciate that because in my district, there are two businesses that I can think of off the top of my head that are very successful. One of them is a cafe and the other is a movie theater that is fully staffed with people with differing abilities and they are a thriving business. Um, with the remainder of my time, I want to go to Mr. Anton. You talked about uh, actually going to your supervisor and quitting your job because you didn't feel that you were fulfilled. How difficult was it for you to find a new job after you made that, that uh, really important decision? Mr. Anton? I think I'm gonna throw my pistol up. Hello. <laughs> 
Hi, I'm sorry. I don't know if you heard my question. I said, when you made the decision to quit your job, how difficult was it for you to find a new job? It took, took me a while to figure it out from the beginning. Mm -hmm. but, and I also, I, and through my advocacy, work people saw me working hard to get hired at MDSC, the Mass Down Syndrome Congress, as a legislative specialist, and also the minimum wage, uh, above the minimum wage. And thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Anton. You show us that it is in fact possible. Madam Chair, I yield back.